what's up welcome or welcome back to my youtube channel my dog is just going to be sunbathing on my bed behind me during this video i guess As you can see by the title, this is a sleep training q and I posted a question on my Instagram story a few days ago asking anyone to ask me questions about our sleep training experience and our sleep training journey because we are two weeks into sleep training and it has gone so incredibly well for us. If you are new here and you don't know, I am a mother of twin babies. They are almost eight months old now. When they were seven months, we decided to start sleep training. Why do you have to mess up the pillows, Dobby? <laughs> Does anyone else's dog? <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to link a video up here that I posted last week. It was a vlog weekend in our life and we were on like day six of sleep training and I went through the journal that Jonathan and I kept during the first week of sleep training and I talked about exactly what those first like six days looked like as far as progress and what times we put them down what times they woke up things like that i put in that video i don't want this video to be that i want this video to be talking more about the thought process that went into sleep training tips and tricks that i've learned through my experience i always like to caveat and say that what works for us may not work for you but i think a lot of the things and the methods that i used have worked for a lot of parents so i've done a ton of research and i just figured i would share because when I did share on my Instagram story that we did sleep train, I got so many questions from you all. And to be honest, I haven't really looked at them because my life is a blur and I didn't really have time. So this is going to be off the cuff, but sometimes I think it's better that way. And I don't put pressure on myself to answer perfectly. Like I'm just going to respond exactly how I feel as I read these questions. So hopefully that's helpful. Also should note that I just screenshotted the question, so there's not going to be any sort of order to this whatsoever and let's just get into it because there are a lot first one what do you do when they cry through their scheduled nap time i guess i should kind of start by saying the structure that we used with sleep training because that might answer some of the questions that come in jonathan and i sat down and we created like a plan and we said this is going to be hard we are completely shaking things up we need to stick to this plan and see it through and by plan i mean we had a bedtime which we always stuck with anyway before even sleep training but we always start our bedtime routine at six o'clock at night the girls are asleep by seven so at six we kind of do a tubby we do a massage we play lullabies sometimes we'll read a book like things like that we just kind of get the girls in sleep mode give them a bottle now we keep them awake the best we can to have them go to sleep awake in the crib that's a big part of sleep training and they're asleep by seven and so our plan and goal is okay they're asleep by seven they're in their cribs until 7 a.m the next morning and i'm sure i'll talk more about what that looks like through this video but that's nighttime and no matter how the night goes especially when you first start sleep training you're usually up a lot through the night you're comforting the babe and you know i'll get into that but no matter what, my advice is that at a certain time in the morning, whether it's 7 a.m. or 8 a.m., for us it was 7 a.m. every morning, we set an alarm and we got the girls up and that was their first feed of the day. Because that way we are now on a schedule every day during the daytime, which we never were before. And so get up at 7 a.m., do a bottle, play, wake window for about two and a half hours, and then 9.30 a.m. they are napping. So we put them in their cribs and they're napping at 9.30, they're awake again, up for a few hours, and then back down for a nap at 1.30 p.m. in the afternoon. That's their last nap. Our girls are on a two-nap schedule because that works for us. You can definitely be on a three-nap schedule. I know a lot of babies are sleepy. Our girls, a two-nap schedule works. And so I say all that to answer this question, what do you do when they cry through their scheduled nap time? So we took the approach that in that morning nap, they needed to be in their cribs for one hour. And so sometimes, especially at first, they would only be sleeping for like 30 minutes and then they would wake up and cry or wake up and fuss. But no matter what, even if they wake up and cry, we keep them in their crib for one hour. Same thing for the afternoon nap, but it's an hour and a half minimum. Sometimes they sleep two hours. You know, if they wake up after an hour for that nap, we keep them in their crib for an hour and a half at least in the afternoon. You're kind of training them to realize that just because they're awake or just because they're fussing and they're not able to connect those sleep cycles, 
you're not going to just go in and pick them up. They need to get comfortable in their cribs. And I swear it's really, really hard at first, but it does get easier. So the next question was, what do you do when they wake up earlier than their scheduled nap time? I think I just touched on that. For us, we're kind of actually talking now about having the er, the first nap of the day be the girl's longer nap because the, sometimes they're more sleepy at that time. So you can be flexible or whatever, but I think knowing that your goal every day is to have the babies in their crib for a certain amount of time for us it's at least two and a half hours like combined for both naps so an hour in the morning hour and a half in the afternoon sometimes again it's longer it's just important to stick to a certain time that you commit to having them in their cribs even if they cry even if they wake up because now the girls like in the morning sometimes they're up at 6 a.m fussing around for an hour in their crib we let them stay they're fine they'll fuss they'll cry a little but they soothe themselves because now they like their crib they're comfy and cozy in there and it gives mom and dad time back in the day and it is important because i feel like i am a better mother to these girls now that we've done this sleep training i really do so Anyways, the next question is what resources did you use to learn about sleep training? So actually, I want to show these two books. One that we really love, Jonathan and I read this the weekend we decided to sleep train, and it's called The Baby Sleep Solution by Susie Giordano. It had a lot of good reviews, and I really, really like this book. This actually talks about starting sleep training earlier than we did, and I think that as you get you know, later in the baby's first year, it can be a little bit more difficult to sleep train, but I feel strongly that six months is like the sweet spot for sleep training. I know a lot of people sleep train earlier than that. I would not have done this any earlier. I think your baby has needs that need to be met up until six months. That is my own personal belief, but I think as long as you start within the first year, you know, you can sleep train your baby. And I think you can afterwards too. It just may pose different challenges also this is specific to twin parents i know there's a lot of twin mothers and fathers that follow me so this is called what to do when you're having two and it does have some great sleep training resources in here so both of these books were great i know there's others out there but to answer your question those were two that i used and i did a lot of online research and we did also use the ferber method so i know i got questions about that too so i'm just going to touch on it now the ferber method you can look up online there are a lot of charts and it's a form of gentle sleep training so this is the method we chose to use i know a lot of people a lot of people messaged me about following taking care of babies so many messages that that worked so so well for a lot of you and i think it's very similar to the ferber method but we just used ferber where to start you put your baby down and you know whether your baby is crying right away or wakes up crying later on you essentially let them cry for three minutes and then you go in and you soothe them so you can touch their chest you can just shush them a lot of people don't recommend touching them at all we did offer comfort by touch and we would just say, you know, mommy loves you, I'm here for you. And you kind of just do that until they de-escalate their crying to a point that it's not crazy and you leave the room. And then you go back after five minutes and do the same thing again, you leave the room. And if they're continuing to cry, you go back after 10 minutes. And that's kind of the pattern. Once you hit 10 minutes, that it just stays at 10 minutes every waiting period. And I can honestly say we never really had to get to the 10 minute point. They would always end up soothing themselves after that five minute break for the most part. At least they would soothe themselves to the point that they would like settle and it wouldn't be like crazy crying for a long period of time. Most nights, I think one or two nights it was more intense crying, but we did soothe them and we followed this method and it worked so well. So. A lot of questions on what method we used and Ferber I would recommend. Someone said, were there a lot of tears? So there were tears from the babies and there were definitely tears from mom. I am obviously talking about this experience really positively because I'm so grateful we did this. Our household is just a whole new place, truly, but it was hard and it is very difficult. Make sure you have people to lean on, make sure that you have a partner that you are committed to doing this with because you need to lean on each other. It's not fun hearing your child cry. It's not natural to not go in and soothe them right away, but you are helping them in the long run. So yes, there were tears and it's not easy. Why did you decide to start now and not before? Is there a proper age and weight? Again, do your research and decide what is best for you. I don't know if there's a proper age or weight. I know a lot of people say not to do it before four or five months. There are also specialists out there that say you can do it earlier. 
I just could not have imagined doing it before our daughters hit six months. I was so, you know, gung-ho set on doing whatever they needed, feeding them when they were fussing and clearly crying, you know, hugging them when they needed to be nurtured. Like I just went with my gut the first six months, but then I felt like they were at a point where sleep training was the best decision. So our mother's intuition, father's intuition, we knew it was best for us. So do what's best for you. I also think like I was home on maternity leave for five months. If you are a parent that needs to go back to work really soon after having children and you need that sleep, like you have to do what's best for you and talk to your pediatrician and you know, that is a, a you decision. I can't really advise. I can only tell you what we did. Did you leave them in their room together? Any issues with one waking the other up? So this is a great question and this is specific to twins. There are some twin specific questions in here, just an FYI. But we do have them in the same room. They've always been in the same room. We always want them to be in the same room. That just feels important to me. A lot of studies say that twins don't wake each other up from crying and we've learned that that is definitely the case. The only time that one baby would wake the other baby up is when like one baby would cry, we would go in and soothe that baby. The other baby would kind of feel mom and dad's presence in the room, get excited or whatever and wake up. Which is also another reason why sleep training has been great because we're not going in in the middle of the night to soothe one baby anymore and wake that baby up, feed, change, do all of that. Like we don't do that anymore. So we have not really had an issue with one baby waking the other up. Even on nights where one baby is, is intensely crying for those few minutes, it hasn't, wake, it hasn't woke the other baby up. So studies say that that's like true across the board. So hopefully that continues that way. But honestly, the girls have been sleeping completely through the night with no issue the last week. So knock on wood, knock on wood. Did you focus on nights first, still helping resettle at naps initially, or did you do it all at once? So as mentioned, we did it all at once. We literally, I mean, I talked about it in my last video. I hit a breaking point. We got in the car. We live on the North shore of Boston and Jonathan and I drove the girls up to New Hampshire because we just needed to get out of the house. They weren't sleeping at all. The only time they were napping during the day was in the car and we just broke and we read these books together and we drew out this plan. And I think it's important to do it all at once. If you have like the time and energy to do that, having your plan at night and having that wake up time in the morning, every morning, I really, really recommend that. How often were your girls waking in the night and needing resettling before we started training? So the girls were waking up, it, it was so inconsistent. Every single night was different. For the most part, the girls were waking up at least once a night. I would say probably once a night, but it was different times every night. So Jonathan and I were just like up all night because you wake up with one baby, you don't know how long you should wait to go in. You're nurturing one baby, it's waking up the other one. By the time you get that one settled, the other baby's up and both parents have been up the whole time. And so with twins, it's just like sleep training has made such a difference even more so, but they were waking up at least once a night every night to answer that question. Did you need to get rid of the girl's pacifier to sleep train if they still use them? So funny enough, Renny has never taken to a pacifier. She's teething right now and I think randomly some nights we'll offer it to her and she'll take it just to like gnaw on. But Sienna is definitely um, a pacifier baby, but rarely, like never during the day. And we only offer her a pacifier when she needs to like settle. So it hasn't been a problem. When we did the first few nights of sleep training where they were still getting up in the middle of the night, there were a few times where we did offer the passy and it was no problem. I think that's totally fine for sleep training. How do you handle wake windows with two? I have triplets and can't seem to balance it right. Having twins, I just like cannot even imagine having triplets. So you are a super human, super mom. However, it's okay if you don't feel that way and you need to ask for a ton of help because I know I sure would. So don't feel like you have to be super mom all the time, even though you just are. Anyways, I really, really think being a twin mom who for the first six months was a wake window mother. I just focused on their wake windows and was flexible with their nap times every day. Now I am so happy that they are on a schedule. I recommend it. I know it's even harder with triplets to do that, I'm sure, but try this out. I really think that if you can get them on a sleep schedule, like now the girls, they definitely still have days where they fuss and they don't go down easy during their naps, but they, their body knows the time that a nap is coming and it's just helped. So I think having that schedule every day is amazing. And again, I talked about it in my previous video. It's hard those first few nights of sleep training where you might be up all night and you don't want to get them up at 7am to start the day because you just went to sleep. But 
sacrifice those those few nights of sleep and get them on that day schedule and it's it makes such a difference what did you do prior to sleep training zero to six months as mentioned we had no structure we kind of just let every day be what it became but we did a few things that i think set us up for success with sleep training first is that we had the girls napping in their cribs from you know the week we brought them home from the hospital or from the NICU so they were always napping in their cribs at least once a day we also wanted them to be comfortable in their bassinet so we had them nap in their bassinet too so they were comfortable in their cribs from the beginning we had them in our room with us until four months but then once it was four months and our pediatrician said it's totally fine they can be in their own room now we transition them into their own room and i think that's helpful because it just puts a little bit of separation earlier on so i think those things between zero and six months did help us with our sleep training when we chose to start it this is a random question but someone asked what kind of formula we used i don't know if it's because you think that that might affect sleep training or whatever we do use similac i did breastfeed up until six months i don't know if that affects sleep training i would think that if your children are exclusively breastfed sleep training might be a little bit harder so give yourself grace if you are thinking you want to start sleep training but you're still trying to breastfeed like it's like a lot to manage look for resources find what is best for you again for me like being a pumping mother up for those first six months i couldn't imagine also trying to like get this training schedule in and whatever so um, breastfeeding is extremely hard and yeah they're on similac to answer that question so i'm just going through these tons of questions around does one baby wake the other up and all of that i was really worried about that too but they really don't like they really don't i mean there are random nights where i think you know we have like sleep cycles and sometimes you're in less of a deep sleep i've noticed that if one baby is like really crying sometimes the other baby will like move a little bit more in their sleep but they usually can put themselves back down to sleep now that they've been trained to do that so i don't think it's a concern if you have twins i don't believe that you have to separate them to sleep train we are sleep trained but starting a regression need all the tips so i looked into this too because it does worry me because i feel like you do all this work and then you have these crazy regressions but regressions are temporary and i think for us if we hit a regression we are just going to stick with this method and it may be really hard i will talk about it in future videos if this happens to us but i just know that i don't want to regress <laughs> in our progress so if we have regression periods that come and there are bad nights sleep ahead i think it's okay and it'll make me feel better to stick with our plan to stick with our schedule until you know the girls get to a point where they only need one nap and whatever all the things that come in time but I would say my advice to you is if you start sleep training, stick with it. How much crying was involved? Was it hard on you guys? Yes. Yes. Um, I'm answering yes to the latter part of that question. It was very hard on us. And using the Ferber method is nice because it allows you to go in, check on the baby. Like I would never be a close the door, shut it for the night kind of mother when my children are crying and every time they were crying i'm like at the door just ready to go in it's it's not fun but it is really really necessary for the health of your home i do believe that and i think it's so important to again have a partner or if your partner's not into this like if you have a caregiver around a mother i saw a lot of advice that said you know recruit people in your life that are a little a little bit more removed from the child to help you through the sleep training process because they can remind you they can be rational like i know their baby's crying right now but you can do this it's better for the households like you're helping the baby by letting them just do this little bit of crying you know it's not easy and it feels unnatural but i haven't said this in this video yet but i have noticed a change in my daughters they are genuinely happier babies now that they are getting consistent sleep now that they have structure back so i would just tell you if you're starting the sleep training journey like you are doing your children a favor you are helping them get the sleep that they need you're helping them connect those sleep cycles and you know the short bit of time where there are a lot of tears is worth it in my opinion how to know wake windows do we just ask a pediatrician full-time mom in july ah, it's gonna be here before you know it talk to your pediatrician yes 
However, I love my pediatrician, love the nurses that I've talked with, but there's definitely been certain things that I've talked with them about and we've disagreed on. <laughs> so I think it's okay to talk to your pediatrician and also talk to others and seek out different sources of information because to just trust like one outlet is not always in your best interest. However, yes, talk to your pediatrician about wake windows. I think there's different rules for different stages, right? And you also need to go off what your children are telling you. Just pay attention, you know, are they starting to get sleepy after a certain period of time? You know, write it down, take a week and write down how many hours did it seem like my daughter was getting fussy and showing signs of sleepy? Like that's probably her wake window or maybe try to shorten that wake window a little bit so she doesn't get to the point of being fussy. Things like that are really, really helpful. I think rule of thumb generally, at least at the stage my babies are, like they shouldn't be awake for more than three hours right now. And I think most babies, that's the case around this time period. So do your research. There's so many resources out there and you'll get to know your baby. I was so worried about this when I was pregnant so I get the stage that you're at right now but it's crazy how much you'll just learn your child's and you'll learn their wake windows. My baby's night sleep is so bad, he'll only sleep on my chest, which is so bad, any tips? Okay, first, it is not bad that your baby is sleeping on your chest. For someone that is now a mother of sleep trained babies, I definitely get sad when I do think about the fact that they don't fall asleep on my chest anymore. I'm literally crying. <laughs> it's not bad, enjoy the time that you have with that and you're such a good mom still like it's okay if your baby sleeps on your chest that means they're cozy and they're safe and don't beat yourself up about it anyways that being said if you are at your breaking point like i certainly was and i was willing to pass up the chest sleeping to get some more sleep you do have to stop having your baby fall asleep on your chest and they have to get comfortable in their crib the best thing you can do is try to keep them awake after a feed and when they're on you and when they're just drowsy, put them in the crib. Start just during one nap a day where you're not letting the baby fall asleep on you. You know, you're doing a feed or you can rock a little bit and just get them to that point where they're drowsy but awake and place them in the crib. And they're gonna cry, they're not gonna like it, but you can soothe them, put your hand on their chest, give them a binky, give them a lovey if they're big enough in the crib and be there for them, you know, shush them. Our girls love the shh sound. And so we would do that a lot and we just would not pick them back up and we would have them fall asleep in the crib. It just is really hard at first, but eventually they will learn that they can sleep in cozy places that are not just on mom's chest. It's really hard, soak up those snuggles, but you're a great mom and you can do this. <laughs> How do you find time for sexy time with your husband with twins? And honestly, if you need some motivation to get this sleep training thing done, I will say that there is definitely more time for your <laughs> partner and you when you sleep train. So my answer is just that, sleep train and you will have much more time with your partner. <laughs> How many days did sleep training take and how did it work with naps? So I've talked about the schedule and all of that, but as far as how many days it took, I would say that it's a week. It's that idea that it takes three days to build a new habit, but it takes seven days to break a bad one. And so pretty much everything we were doing <laughs> before was like bad habits, right? Letting them fall asleep in the bottle, putting them to sleep in the crib completely asleep like all the things that you're not supposed to do when you start sleep training it takes seven days to break those habits so i think it took us a week we definitely saw progress after like three or four days though even i mean night two was better than night one it was still pretty bad i would say expect three nights of brutal sleep but so worth it and after a week it was just amazing. I mean, in that last video last week, it was day six and I was like on a cloud. So even like five, six days, it was amazing and the hard work was like paying off. So it's different for everybody. I know that for some parents, it takes two weeks. It also depends on how dedicated you are. I will say that even, um, and again, I talked about it in the other video, so I don't want to be repetitive here, but on night like three or four we did pick up the babies um i think we picked up sienna night three and red night four actually because it was just like too much and we both just went off of our intuition and we picked up the babies and i remember we woke up the next day and we felt defeated we were like did we set ourselves back in progress and we didn't we just woke up the next morning we stuck to the schedule and they learned it and it just didn't affect our process at all so if there are nights where you need to pick up your child and nurture them you know go with that mother or father's intuition that you have 
and then just get back to your plan so interesting i've gotten a few questions on formula so maybe um there's just an association with like formula with sleep or whatever that people consider so i've already answered that i think that just going off the theme of food the idea is to have your child not need a night feed anymore and i will say that before sleep training we were feeding them once a night usually when they would get up we kind of assumed all right they're up they need a night feed or whatever we kind of have trained that out of them and you know realize that they don't need that night feed anymore but i do think it's important to make sure they're getting enough food during the day i would say what we were told is to always offer them more than you think they need and the idea is that if a baby drinks an entire bottle they needed more milk but if they leave an ounce or something then you know you gave them enough so i think our pediatrician had said that to us and so they have around like 30 ounces a day and it's enough that they no longer need a night feed so i think just like whatever formula or breast milk you give them just make sure they are getting enough food during the day that can get them through the night and if your child really seems to need a night feed still there are sleep training resources you can follow that still allow and encourage you to give them that one bottle at night but it's you know being quiet when you go in don't make any eye contact don't change a diaper unless there's poop in it just give them the feed put them right back to bed you know you can still do that and um, some babies definitely still need night feeds we were planning on still feeding the girls at night if they needed it but they ended up just sleeping through the night now someone wrote honestly i'll just take any advice i'm scared don't be scared i was scared too and honestly i had to get to a pretty low point to even like consider doing this and have it be a thing so just know that if you're not at a point where you're ready don't push yourself you need to be in a good headspace to commit to something like sleep training but don't be scared it's amazing when you're on the other side and it's really really hard to get there though i will be honest about that again and again but don't be scared it's really worth it naps we've gotten night down but naps are zombie phase sometimes only 25 minutes also that is like very normal and again the approach we took and we stick with is having that committed time where they are in the crib at every nap you know going in and following the ferber method i don't know if i mentioned that but you're supposed to still go in if they are crying intensely during those naps do the same thing that you do at night go in after three minutes soothe comfort them leave the room go back after five minutes again look online for different resources to follow and guidelines but eventually they will get comfier in the crib it's also normal that like some babies some days just take short naps i know our girls took really short naps before we sleep trained and now for the most part they sleep at least an hour in the morning sometimes it's like 45 minutes and sometimes it takes them 15 minutes to go down when we put them in the crib and same thing with the afternoon but um there are definitely some days where they just decide that they don't want to sleep for that long and that is very normal babies do be making up their own rules i have four month twins and they always wake each other at night do you have this issue that's so interesting because again a lot of people and experts say that twins don't wake each other up but i'm assuming that there are cases where they do so i'm sorry that's happening it could just be that they are just on the same schedule like a lot of times you think the twins are waking each other up but just <laughs> they're twins and they are on the same sleep cycle and with sleep training when you have them on more of a schedule and there's more intention in their days they will wake each other up less i i would venture to say so i think you could still definitely give it a go and try and know that in those first few nights where there is a little bit more crying happening in the rooms they may wake each other up if that's their thing but eventually they will sleep longer through the night they will connect their sleep cycles and they won't cry like our daughters the last few nights there's been no crying at all they'll wake up and fuss a little bit and they'll just put themselves back to sleep so eventually that shouldn't be a problem for you did you notice the four month regression so interesting because our daughters were never like good sleepers ever so we really didn't notice the four month regression which was kind of nice because it was like oh just another chapter four months nothing's changed the four month is a real thing though most babies experience a regression and it's pretty brutal for parents that had really good sleepers before that <laughs> so it just for us we just never we never had good sleep what was the hardest part for you sleep training i mean you would obviously think the crying and of course that was the hardest but i think for me it was a little triggering being a nicu mother and i did want to just mention this if you are a nicu mom where you started your motherhood journey off with not being able to care for your child the way you naturally should by holding them when they need you and all of that 
you know, there were a lot of times in the NICU where my child was crying or in need and I could not hug them, touch them, pick them up, do what I needed to do as a mom. And so for me, it was hard to separate that from this experience. It was hard for me to process, you know, I can go in and, and pick up my child right now. Why am I not doing that? But just the reminder that this is best for my child. It is best for my mental health. You know, I felt like there was an added layer to it being a NICU mom. So I do just want to say that, that you may find that added level of difficulty with sleep training, but you can get through it and you will hug your babies extra tight every morning. I know now I certainly do and it is all okay, but that's definitely been the hardest part. Do you put the girls down awake? Yes, we put them down drowsy and I will say that the girls oftentimes do fall asleep at the bottle when we feed them at night and we do feed them their bottle like right before we put them down but we try to keep the lights on we dim them just to get them into that sleepy mode after their bedtime routine but when we feed them the bottle we do our best to keep them awake and drowsy but sometimes they do just fall asleep and as we put them into their crib we try to just talk and say i love you sleep tight so that they kind of wake up and know where they are but we try to not have them be on us sleepy for a long time before putting them in the crib do you follow bio schedule wake times or sleepy cues i definitely talked about that already kind of all of the above again you have to like know your baby and know what's going to work best and we followed wake windows and sleepy cues for a while until we realized we needed to have them on this sleep training structure so that's something i think that's very individual just do your research and then also use your gut how did you know they were ready to be sleep trained that is such a good question and again i have been honest in saying that i did not ever think i would sleep train i had a lot of friends that did sleep training i kind of thought that you know following the rules of sleep training would be part of like our everyday structure like okay i'll just pay attention to their sleepy cues and you know i'm never gonna let them cry it out and all this stuff i just thought we wouldn't have to get there i kind of always thought they're gonna figure it out like i'll just do all this gentle approach stuff and they'll just figure it out and obviously that wasn't the case i knew i was ready to sleep train and i think i took that as priority i knew that i was at my breaking point i knew that we needed something to be different so i'm not sure that i necessarily knew my daughters were ready i just knew they could handle it i knew that they were big enough i knew that they were you know strong girls they definitely just needed a little bit more structure i just could tell you know they were getting a little bit more irritable during the day i couldn't follow their wake windows as well and so all that kind of combined influenced the reason that we were all ready to start sleep training. How was the girl's sleep before? My three month old only wakes up twice, not sure when to start. It's a great question. And you know, if you're feeling good in your schedule and you're feeling like, you know, you can handle the times that you're up in the middle of the night and the times that you're up during the day and it feels healthy still, I would say that you're okay. Again, like I think the six month mark is a great time to start sleep training. You can start doing things now. Like I think with your child, start, you know, putting them in their crib for naps. And once they hit that four month mark, start having them be in the nursery at night. Like little things like that can start getting you ready to eventually sleep train. Your baby's three months waking up two times in, in the middle of the night. To me, that feels very normal, expected. They've only been out in the world for three months. And I, again, personally think like six months is the time to start considering sleep training if you need to do it earlier and you know in your gut then start it but you just have to know in your gut i know i keep saying that but to ask you know not sure when to start you have to just like use that mother's intuition and just do little things to set yourself up for success for when you do eventually decide to sleep train if you do is one of your twins a better sleeper than the other yes i think this is pretty common with twins they are always on different pages i swear i'm like identical who my wren bird is definitely a better sleeper than sienna and so that honestly hasn't like posed challenges we just kind of know that if a baby's up it's usually her so it doesn't really make a difference it's kind of a bummer because a lot of nights i'm like wow if sienna was as good a sleeper as wren we'd be getting even more sleep but I, again now they both sleep through the night she just like fusses a little bit more sometimes so yeah i think it's normal that one baby picks up on it a little bit quicker than the other last question do you feel like a bad mom for sleep training and that is such a fair question because again it is not natural to hear your child cry and not 
go run to be with them and comfort them i think some mothers have an easier time with that and it doesn't make them any worse or better of a mother i think it's just different for everybody and yes i did feel like a bad mom the first night i remember looking at jonathan and being like why are we doing this like this is horrible i whatever all those things but luckily he was there to remind me of how i felt earlier in that day defeated i felt like the girls weren't getting the sleep they needed i felt like i was at a point that was scary i was definitely at a pretty depressed state and you know you just need those reminders when you feel like a bad parent that the choices you are making are best for your family and when they're hard they're hard but you're not a bad parent and with sleep training you really need to remind yourself of that and you need to know that it is a good decision and i truly believe that and i know that's also controversial because a lot of people don't believe in sleep training and i do think there are a lot of programs out there that try to market and sell sleep training tactics and guides and all of that so try not to buy into you know the ways that companies are trying to monetize sleep training you need to do what's best for you and there's a lot of free resources out there that you can follow um again ferber method guides are all over the internet these books are really good the baby sleep solution i really like and taking care of babies is another really good one i will link all this stuff down below for you i have all the faith in the world in you that you can do it i genuinely never thought i would be able to and if i can do it you can do it and also if you try it and it's not for you don't like push yourself to it you can always take a break and try again down the line you need to be in a really healthy mental state to commit to something like this and so do it when you're ready but I hope that this was really helpful if there are any additional questions I know I always say it but please reach out to me I always encourage you to message me on Instagram because sometimes I don't get a chance to respond to all the comments on YouTube but I do always respond to messages on Instagram I love talking with you there it's a little bit more intimate if you ever need anything like I am here and happy to chat so I love you guys and I will see you in my next video Take you to be wilder I don't fit into your parts Beauty queens with final flowers